we know that uh, we have two types of diabetes mellitus one is type 1 diabetes mellitus and the next is type 2 diabetes mellitus and uh, we also know that type 1 diabetes mellitus is because of some autoimmune disorder where we develop anti um, uh, immunity against our own beta cells so uh, what happens is this uh, lymphocytes which are against this lymphocytes and antibodies which are against this which are synthesized uh, produced against this beta cells they go and attack beta cells they cause inflammation in the pancreas they they destruct beta cells uh, so uh, after some time we don't have a uh, beta islets of langerhans to synthesize insulin so there is a complete insulin deficiency in type 1 diabetes mellitus and what uh, and the age of onset is very young since autoimmune disorders present at 15 to 20 or 15 to 30 years of age the age of onset is also very uh, uh, young and um, we know that this is not that common when we compare to type 2 diabetes mellitus but still we uh, we may come across cases where they have they present with uh, where the patients present with uh, early onset diabetes then we have to suspect type 1 deficiency with type 1 diabetes mellitus so uh, what actually happens is as i told uh, before antibodies and uh, lymphocytes are produced against this beta cell that is so automatically what happens is the beta cells get chronically inflamed and they automatically in one or one day all the beta cells get damaged and there is not even a single beta cells to produce insulin so there is a complete insulin deficiency this is what the pathology in um, type 1 diabetes it is something hla related so even genetically related it is transmitted genetically also this is what genetic predisposition or and also we have some environmental trigger for or type 1 diabetes like I guess a virus like Coxsackie or Epstein-Barr or uh, some drugs so these may cause or uh, trigger the production of uh, immunity against beta cells so we have genetic predisposition and also we also have environmental causes okay so let's talk about what actually happens when we don't have insulin at all so whenever we eat blood glucose increases but there is no mechanism to uh, reduce the blood glucose level so there will be a constant hyperglycemia okay done we have read that uh, polyuria polydipsia polyphage is a symptom of diabetes mellitus but what makes that polyuria what makes uh, okay right we have high glucose level so what is the relation between high glucose level and polyuria what is the relation between high glucose level and polydipsia and polyphagia we need to know that we need to understand the physiology so what happens is we have persistent hyperglycemia in the blood and we know that hyperglycemia will increase the osmolarity of blood no, when we uh, stir a, when we have a sugar solution that will be comparatively thicker than a normal water solution, right? So similarly, when we have high glucose level in the blood, the osmolarity of blood uh, blood is increased. So automatically, what happens is it enters. So automatic, we have blood in where intravascular compartment, and there is increased osmolarity in the blood. So there is increased osmolarity in the intravascular compartment. And, a, and from the theory of osmosis, we come to know that water moves towards high osmolar state, right? Automatically, water content, water molecules from the intracellular compartment moves to the ex intravascular compartment. Do you understand? So automatically, all those extravascular fluid comes inside vascular because the osmolarity of blood is high. So automatically by osmosis, all the water, most of the water, nearly nearly uh, 20 to 30 percentage of water, depending upon the osmolarity of blood, they come intravascularly. So automatically, what happens? We have increased amount of fluid inside the vessels. So that increased fluid goes into the kidneys. Automatically, the kidney causes the it, the kidney makes increased urine output. So this is why we have polyuria in diabetes mellitus. At the same time, we have something called as osmotic diuresis. Uh, nothing, it is nothing but uh, osmolarity of uh, 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 glomerular filtration rate present inside the uh, tubules is also high. So automatically that holds water and that inhibits reabsorption of water. So that is also one of the reason why we have uh, increased urine output in diabetes mellitus. So whenever we have increased volume loss, increased water loss, automatically our body senses. So our body goes for a state of dehydration. So automatically there will be increased thirst that we call it as polydipsia and polyphagia will explain you why polyphagia is there. So this is why dehydration happens in diabetes mellitus. This is why dehydration happens because of insulin deficiency. We have hyperglycemia and because of hyperglycemia we have osmotic diuresis and because of osmotic diuresis we have increased fluid loss from the body. So dehydration occurs. So this is one part of diabetes and the next part is I, as I told in my previous video we need insulin for entry of glucose into the cell through GLAT4 receptor. I have told you in that my, in my previous video. So when we don't have insulin, we don't have GLAT4 receptor in the membrane. When we don't have GLAT4 receptor automatically, there won't be glucose entering into, this, entering into the cell. We have massive glucose outside the cell, but that glucose is not entering into the cell. So when we think uh, from a mindset of a cell, so what that cell will think, I don't get glucose at all. 
I guess there is very less amount of glucose in the uh, body. It, the cell will think like that and it will send signals to uh, all the metabolic process in our body to what? To crave for glucose. That's why people who have diabetes mellitus will crave for a sweetie beverages, will crave for a sweetie solution. Though they have high glucose level in the blood, but still the cells in the body senses that they don't have glucose at all because the glucose is not entering into the cell. So it senses and it sends every uh, signals to the cell, uh, every signals to the metabolic process so that it absorbs more glucose from the body from the gland. So this is point number one. Point number two is when there is no source of energy because the important source of energy for a cell is glucose. So when we don't have that source of energy, it depends on other sources. So what are the other sources is fatty acids. So it sends signals to break lipids from the adipose tissue and also sends signals to break glycogen from the liver. So all this process, by, this pro by doing so, what happens is there is breakdown of lipids, there is breakdown of glycogen and breakdown of lipids causes free fatty acids. So there is enormous amount of free fatty acids in the blood in a diabetic patient. So these free fatty acids come to the liver and that free fatty acid is converted, partially converted to glucose through gluconeogenesis and also partially it is converted into ketone bodies. So when the free fatty acid is completely oxidized, we get glucose molecules, we get ATP, not glucose, we get ATP. But when the fatty acid is partially oxidized, then there is development of a uh, dangerous substance called ketone bodies. So when there is increased ketone levels in the blood, which exceeds the metabolism of ketone, automatically blood ketone level rises and ketone is an acid ketoacidic acid ketone is similar to an acid so automatically the acidity of our body increases and that leads to an acute and dangerous situation called diabetes ketoacidosis i will explain you uh, in my next video what is diabetic ketoacidosis and how to manage a case of diabetic ketoacidosis so let's have a short recap it is an autoimmune disorder where there is complete destruction of beta cells so that we don't have insulin at all so symptoms pertaining to insulin deficiency will develop and we have hyper so hyperglycemia will be there because of hyperglycemia osmotic diuresis will be there and because of osmotic diuresis we have dehydration on the other aspect we have excessive fatty acid breakdown and we have development of ketone bodies and that causes diabetic ketoacidosis and we also develop symptoms pertaining to high blood glucose level when you have high blood glucose level we have polyuria we have polydipsia and polyphagia. Polyphagia is because we have a body senses that we don't have glucose at all so it sends signals so it, it, it uh, stimulates the uh, fe uh, feeding center. No, it, 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 it causes decreased secretion of satiety center and uh, it stimulates feeding center that's why we have a constant sense of uh, uh, hunger. Okay, so um, hyperglycemia symptoms are um, blurring of vision, um, a fatigue, constant fatigueness, malaise, uh, a constant thirst, dry mouth, nausea, vomiting, headache can be there. And all these features are features of hyperglycemia. And also, uh, uh, we get uh, complications of diabetes. We have macrovascular and microvascular complication. When we have constant blood glucose, higher blood glucose level, then uh, it damages the blood vessels by a formation of age products. You might have known that age, I, I mean, uh, advanced glycated end products and those cause they, they make the blood vessel a suitable environment for plaque formation subsequently atherosclerosis and myocardial infarction in heart stroke in brain and atherosclerosis of uh, different blood vessels at the same time we have microvascular it affects three parts one is kidney one is eye and the next one is nerves so it, in the uh, kidney it causes nephropathy diabetic nephropathy in the retina it causes diabetic retinopathy and in the uh, nerves it causes diabetic neuropathy Thanks for watching this video. Uh, uh, my next video will be on type 2 diabetes mellitus. Don't forget to watch that video also. Bye.